It'll do. The suite? The floor. The entire floor? I really will have to know who the occupant will be. No, you don't. Mr. Cavins, as president of Peyton Mills, I respect the fact that you are one of our most prominent citizens. But I was manager of the Peyton Towers Hotel before the Allen House chain put its initials on the tower. And I'm personally responsible for the personal service in which this hotel takes great pride. And I want my staff to be aware of this special guest. Personal service. That was a very nice speech. I know that the Peyton Towers plaque is still on the front door. But all you have to provide are the rooms and total privacy. Total. That means no curious bellhops or chambermaids or managers. This guest travels with the complete staff. And when does our mystery guest arrive? Oh, perhaps tonight, perhaps never. These arrangements are only a convenience. And to whom do we send the bill for this convenience? No bill. This is for the New Star Corporation. Mr. Caymans, I realize the New Star Corporation is a very powerful organization. But this is not an almshouse. It's a hotel. And we do... Re Didn't anyone tell you? The New Star Corporation now owns this hotel. safe and sound. Wake up, my love. I guess you could call Peyton Place home.
How are you, Norman? Fine. How's the banking business? Today, a little puzzling. Some people came in. They asked an awful lot of questions about you and Jill. What kind of questions? The balances on your bank accounts, the mortgage on your houseboat, and your credit line with the suppliers. They even asked about your first marriage. <laughs> Who were they? I don't know. They didn't have a warrant or a subpoena. But my executive vice president still cooperated. Internal Revenue Service? I don't think so. They didn't have any identification. Do you have any idea who else would want this kind of information? No. But I'll find out. Thanks for the call, Linda. We're still friends, Norman. We'll always be friends. Yep. Hey, Linda? Yes? How's married life? That depends on who you're married to, doesn't it? What was that all about? Hmm? A midday rendezvous with an old girlfriend? Now listen, Andy. I'll call you right back. Now you don't go away. You mind telling me what the hell's going on around here? Dr. Jensen is the new head of pathology? I thought he was just a substitute while Carter was off on vacation. Well, his appointment's been made permanent. Well, don't you think as chief of staff I might have been consulted on this? Dr. Jensen is a new man in the community. People here at the hospital don't even know his work. It wasn't my decision, Mike. It came from higher up. Higher up. What about this new orderly that's walking around as if he owns the hospital? His name is Crimpton, and Dr. Jensen hired him. Well, it's incredible. Since the Nemo Medical Service have taken over here at the hospital, there have been more personnel changes than in the past ten years. I know, I know. I was one of those changes, remember? Well, I'm going to question the intelligence of that decision. Look, as far as Dr. Jensen goes, let me just check into it, all right? All right. Say, do you want to bring your boy along for dinner with us tonight? Well, if I'm going to have dinner with a very attractive man, frankly, you know. You have some plans that I don't know anything about? Well, I could think of something. <laughs> How nice. <laughs> Yeah. All right. Now, Andy, I just want to know, why didn't you call me when you said you would? Andy? I was busy, Mom. Busy with what? Busy. Now, look, I want to know what you're up to. I'm not up to anything. Now, please, Andy, you have got to understand. We just can't have anything go wrong here. Hayden Place is our last chance, darling. I mean, it's our very last chance. Send his apologies. He'll be joining you later. Uh, you. My overnight bag. Uh, he'll get back.
Watchdog. Where are you, little watchdog? Out on Peyton Highway. How are you feeling? So far, very lonely. All right, go ahead. Call me a worry ward. <laughs> All right, you're a worry ward. Betty Anderson's in town. No kidding. Well, what's she doing here? I don't know, but doesn't it seem odd that she'd turn up just when Rodney and Allison were coming back? Yes, it does. It's probably just a coincidence. <sighs> I hope so. The three of them were bad chemistry. Somebody got hurt every time. It always meant trouble. I still don't understand what you're talking about, Stephen. Are you here for business or pleasure? A little of both. Why didn't you bring your wife? I did. She's at the inn, resting. What's her name? Carla. Carla. Now you're asking the questions. Well, tell me something. How's Rod? You can ask him yourself tomorrow. He's yeah. here? Mm-hmm. Well, he and Allison are going to be in town here tomorrow night. Allison? I thought she disappeared. Rod finally caught up with her. He never stopped looking. It's very romantic. It'll be like good old home week. Will they be staying with you while they're here? No, they'll probably check into my folks' trailer camp. Well, give my regards. Bye. Bye, Steve. You weren't very friendly. After all, he is sort of a cousin. Linda told me today some people were asking some questions about our bank records. Now Steven shows up asking a lot of questions. There's got to be a connection. There's got to be. Come on. Billy. <laughs> oh, it's good to see you, Denise. Oh, you look terrific. Thank you. <laughs> so do you. Oh, well. You know, I was so surprised to hear from you after all these years. Uh, I, I know it's short notice. I, I hope it wasn't an inconvenience. Oh, heavens no. I mean, what are friends for? Come on. Well, I just wanted to come home. <laughs> This is Little Watchdog again. Go, Breaker. This is BWD. I'm out on Peyton Highway and I ain't lonely anymore. That's a big 10 4 LWD. So, what's your husband like? David's a doctor. Yeah, I know that, but what's he like? Bedside manner. Good with his hands? Denise, let me help you. No, no. Hey, please, you're a guest. 
I guess in Chicago you got maids to clean up the dishes. Naturally. Upstairs, downstairs. What are you really doing here, Betty? I mean, when you uh, lived in Peyton Place, you and Denise were never really the best of friends. Of course, we all could be, if you wanted to. You see, me and Denise, I mean, we're really not small town types. Yes. Betty, it's for you. Um, is there someplace else I could take this call? Uh, yes, why don't you use our bedroom? Thank you. Hello, Rod. It's good to hear your voice. I wanted to come. You staying at the trailer camp? <laughs> You'll be driving a, <laughs> a Harrington in a camper. <laughs> Listen, I, I don't want anybody to see me. You understand. Why don't you meet me at the rest area up at Ravensview? Remember? Denise? Could I borrow your car tonight? Thanks. Betty, what are you doing? What are you letting yourself in for? Rod phones and asks you to come back to Peyton Place without even telling you why. And here you are on some godforsaken road in the middle of nowhere. This is what ruined your marriage to Stephen. Stephen knew you were still in love with Rod. Are you going to risk your marriage to David, too? It's funny, this feeling, this excitement. There's been a terrible accident, uh, yes, up at the rest area of Ravenview. A, a camper's gone off the side. M my name is... 
please hurry. I thought you were covering the place, Bob. Something came up. It was important. Rod and Allison checked in. Where are they? They went somewhere. To Allison's folks? How should I know? I'm not their keeper. Connie, you sure Allison's at 8 o'clock? Well, they said they had one stop to make on the way. My brother's never won any medals for being on time, you know. How did them with one of their harebrained explanations? Allison? What? Who is this? Five hundred thousand dollars. Five hundred thousand dollars. Now that's a lot of money. It certainly is. Of course, if you're offering me that much, the uh, prize must be worth a good deal more. Maybe I know enough not to waste your time, Mr. Cord. You know, it won't be easy. Who's going to be a problem? Maybe you are. Why didn't you tell me that my ex-wife and Rodney Harrington were both in town? I didn't know that. Am I supposed to believe that? I didn't want to see Rodney just now. It's late, Allison. I know what you're thinking. He's married. Yes, he is married, Allison. Good night. Mother, I lied. Just now, when I said I didn't want to be with Rodney, I did. And I still do. Sit down, Connie. Come on. What is it? Well, Connie, they, uh, they, they're both dead. No, that's yeah. not true. There must be some mistake. Allison can't be dead. Oh, no, it's not true. I'll find out. No one could have survived a crash like that. Man. Delivery. Come on, not tonight, honey. I'm tired. That's the switch. What's going on? None of your business. I'm afraid you're going to lose your job. Come on. Coffee break? Yeah. 
Yeah, I think you're right. Come on, they're gonna be up there for a while. Norman, I'm sorry. Thank you. Have you ever heard anything so crazy? They're trying to say that Rod and Allison were drunk. What? Drunk? You believe that? Well, the police found a bunch of broken liquor bottles in the van. Were they drunk, Mike? Well, I don't know. I, I didn't examine them. All I did was identify them. Well, Allison didn't drink. Neither did Rod. It doesn't make any sense. Rod was never drunk a day in his life. He'd never do anything to dull his senses. I just don't understand it. Daddy. What are you doing here? He's dead, isn't he? I saw the accident. I was the one who reported it. Betty, what's this all about? Rod called me a week ago and asked me to meet him in Peyton Place. He, he said it was very important. What was? I don't know. You don't know? You know me. I, I never questioned Rod. He, he said it was something that couldn't be settled over the telephone, that it would be easier to handle here in Peyton Place. And Allison and Rodney weren't coming home just to see the family. They had some other reason to make this trip. Was Allison with him? Yes. I I'm sorry. Betty, did you see Rod tonight? No. But I talked to him about an hour before the accident. We were meeting at Ravensview. Did he sound drunk? Rod, of course not. No, wait a minute, Betty. Look at this. This is important. Did he sound like he was drinking at all? No, I'm positive. Why? Why? I really don't think it was an accident. Stephen Court. He's ready to do business. As soon as he ties up his end, we've got a deal. What's bothering them? They know you don't like me. And Rodney never said anything to you about Allison. No, all he said was that he had to talk to me. He never inferred it was anything personal. But I even stayed at Denise's so it wouldn't look obvious. Tony, we'll have the results of the autopsy in the morning. Oh, no, do they have to do autopsies? Well, I'm afraid it's the law, Connie. What good will it do? We'll bring them back. Well, tell us how they died. Will you do the procedure, Michael? No, Dr. Jensen, he's a new man here in pathology. We don't have any choice, Connie. It's the only way we're going to find out what really happened. What did you rush off to tonight? Work. An hour early? I had to go talk to someone. You listened in on Betty's conversation with Rod, didn't you? You knew she was meeting him in Raven's View. You sure you want to know, Denise? I don't know what I want to know anymore.
I guess you'd known Rodney Harrington and Allison for a very long time. 13, 14 years, huh? See, Rod was the, the very first person I ever met when I came to Peyton Place. He and Betty Anderson came out to meet me the first night at the train station. And Allison? to grow up. She's... I watched her grow from a, a frightened child to a woman. You know, sometimes when you... Well, every, every day is a part of your life that death is involved you. You know, I, I was thinking yesterday about your son. Andy? Yes, you know, I think it would be good for him if I got him out on the boat, you know, to, to crew for us and all. I mean, I think it would help him. I think it would draw him out. You could talk him into it. I mean, he's a very shy young man. <laughs> well, that's it, don't you see? I mean, it would get him active, make him participate in something. Thank you, Mike. I... You need something like that. We'll do it. David. Something terrible has happened. Well, what do you mean? Has something happened to you? Betty? Rod's dead. What? He's dead. How did he die? They say it was an accident, but I... I may have to stay here for a while. Why, darling? Well, some of us think that maybe he was murdered. I, I was the only witness. Well, how did that happen? Don't make me explain it over the phone. David? I love you. And I'm here if you need me. I'll call you tomorrow. Hi. Hi. You seen the paper? No, we heard it on the radio. Betty, you remember my kid sister, Bonnie? Sure. You were more of a kid when I knew you. Aren't you going to be late for school? English is my first class. I hate English. I hate it almost as much as I hate history. Some bummer, huh, Betty? You must have been really shocked when you heard about it. Yes, I was. You know, we're sort of related to Rodney. Our sister Jill's married to Norman now. Yes, I know. Morning. Hi. Morning. Stan, why don't you put a robe on? Yeah. You trying to corrupt a minor? Oh, Betty, I don't understand any of this. Why? Well, an awful lot of unexpected faces showed up in Peyton Place yesterday. You? Both of your ex-husbands? Both. Oh, you mean you didn't know that Stephen Cord's in Peyton Place? No. I had no idea. Mommy will be back in a little while. Okay. 
Hi, honey. I kept the kids home from school today. They don't really know what's happened, but, well, it, it just seemed right. Would you want to leave them, Jill? It gets kind of lonely now that Bo's working back at the mill again. No, it, I just wanted to talk to you about something. Well, what is it, honey? Mom, Allison and Rod, when they checked in here last night, were they drinking? You know me, honey. I never spy on people, especially friends. Yeah, I know it. It's just that... Mom, why did it happen to be them? I know, honey, I know. I look ahead. I've always looked ahead. And you don't have to look very far to see that we may have trouble in this town. Stella, no one's going to give the New Star Corporation any trouble. Don't you understand? The grandson of the founding family and the daughter of the newspaper editor are dead. What are we going to do about it, Stella? Jay? Fire 50 people at the mill and let out the rumor that there will be more layoffs. Stella. Tristan, tell the bank to call in all the short-term loans. Stella, you depressed this town. You're going to lose millions of dollars. So what? I have more. I'll always have more. You see, I've had a motive for getting rich. It's inspired me ever since I left this town. It's a lot more than ordinary greed. She took a worthless little company and she worked and she planned and manipulated brilliantly until she turned it into a giant conglomerate. Do you want to know why? And why I've used my fortune to take over the mill here and the hospital? And why I bought all those shares in the bank? And why I hired you and people like you? I have a goal. It's simple and compelling. And it's very, very important to me. I intend to destroy Peyton Place. You can't argue with the facts. They're your facts, not mine. Well, if your brother's alcohol count was almost 2.5. Excuse me, Look, I'm... doctor, I don't care what your report says. I would like another opinion if I have to fly in a whole plane load of pathologists. Mr. Harrington, when we grieve, we often have these delusions. Hey, doctor, don't patronize me. Norman, Norman, that's not going to help anyone. Have you seen this list? Yeah, Mike Rossi read it to me on the telephone. Are you Dr. Jensen? Yes. Well, I'm Allison's father. I'd like to take a final look at her. Oh, Mr. Carson, uh, the fire and all. In life, I hear your daughter was very beautiful. Now, I don't care about that. I want to see my daughter. Well, I wish you'd think about it. Quit stalling, doctor. I'm not stalling. Tommy. Yes, Doctor. Would you mind showing Mr. Carson his daughter? I'd like to see my brother, too. Would you come with me, gentlemen? to know ahead of time when there's going to be a change of plans. Wouldn't be a change then, would it? Does this change of plans have anything to do with uh, Rodney Harrington's death? 
It has to do with the business that brought me here. You are worse than ever this trip. You are secretive, you're calculating. Calculating? Do you think so? What is it this time? This business deal that you're afraid to talk about? Or is it seeing Betty again? Stephen, where did you disappear to last night? Carla, if I thought you should know, I would have told you. Stephen, I am tired of being the interrogator. But you know what this is doing to our marriage, don't you? Yes. Well, hello. Where are you? All right, I'll meet you in the lobby. That was Betty. Betty. Before you lose your temper, just listen to me. She says she has to talk to me because it's urgent and important. I just do not understand. Crimpton, I don't know where you came from, but in all my years of working... In hospital work, I have never had anything happen like this. So irresponsible, outrageous, and just plain stupid! Have you got any idea what you put those people through? Mrs. Considine, I'm sure... You answer me, have you? It was a mistake. Well, we just can't tolerate those kind of mistakes around here. Now, you're fired. Go down to personnel and pick up your check, and then you get out of here. Dr. Rossi, please tell the Carsons and the Harringtons how sorry I am. Yes, I will do that, Dr. Jensen. You've got quite a temper, haven't you? Well, you haven't seen anything yet until we get this mess straightened out, and I mean immediately. All right, as soon as you have, let me know. I want to examine the body, something I should have done last night. You don't really think... Dr. Rossi, report to intensive care. Dr. Rossi, urgent. I'll be back. And, uh, yes, I do think... Wonderful. But even after all these years, that's not surprising. Uh, would you like some coffee or a drink? No, no thanks. I'm sorry we had to meet under such terrible circumstances. So am I. Look, I, I came to ask you if you know something about Rod and Allison's death. Why should I? <laughs> that look on your face. I knew it so well when we were married. What look is that? A look that says, shall I trust her? Shall I trust her or go it alone? Stephen, if we can help, we owe it to Rod. Do we ever escape the past? Ever? Look, you can't go this alone. You can leave Peyton Place today, but if you do know something, it'll follow you and torture you. Norman. Norman. Stephen, Betty. Stephen, I want to talk to you. You're not the only one that thinks I know something. Do you? Something. Then tell us. You know, I think this afternoon is going to cost me about $500,000. Come on. The three of us are going for a ride.
Stephen, where are we going? You'll see when we get there. All right, all right. I'll, I'll get back to you as soon as I can, then. Thank you. Look, Mike, I can understand your impatience. I thought this whole mess would be straightened out in five minutes. Honey, there's only one reason why anybody would try and hide a couple of dead bodies. Oh, Mike, come on. Sure, it's embarrassing. And it's morbid. But I'm sure there's nothing criminal. There's got to be a logical explanation. All right, then why in personnel wouldn't they let me look at Tom Crimpton's files? Or Dr. Jensen's? Well, I suppose you asked to look at my files, too. No. Should I? Oh. I'm sorry. Now look, Mike, Crimpton has just been fired. I'm sure that the problem is simply that his files are still in processing. Well, maybe that's what he's moving out of the building now, in a rather strange-looking file cabinet. Where's he going with those bodies? I think the crematorium, Doctor. It's just an elderly couple. Let me see this. Right, thanks. your answer. Somewhere in those 50 acres up there. Hmm. We own this land. We? You, Rod, Stephen, and myself. So, this is Indian Hollow. Martin Payton left it to us in his will. Four equal shares. One to each of his grandsons, one for you, one for me. Grandfather, I uh, always want to put a fence up out here and just leave me here. <laughs> What's this got to do with Rod Nelson's death? I don't know. But last night, Jay Caymans made me a very interesting proposition. Who's Jay Caymans? He runs the mill. He's the local straw boss. Takes his orders from the New Star Corporation. What was the proposition? He offered me $50,000 for my share of Indian Hollow and 500000 if I could deliver all four shares. Five hundred thousand dollars? Hmm. Why would anyone offer half a million dollars for this place? Who knows? But I checked the directors of the New Star Corporation. There wasn't one familiar name on it. But I think that somebody we know is behind the offer. Somebody who knows us very well. Why? Well, for some reason. They thought that I could be gotten to. That uh, you two and Rod couldn't. Stephen. It's true. Nobody sent a private plane after you. Or offered you a $500,000 bribe. Nobody. It's somebody who knows us very well. We all go back together a long way. A lot of people have crossed our paths. Yeah. And one of them might be a killer. Don't worry about a thing, Dr. Rossi. I'll have both coffins in the morgue tomorrow with the new identification. Good. Test. Thanks, Ray. All right. right. We'll see you. Maybe there's some ram mineral here that we don't know about. No. They punched holes in the ground around here, but they always came up empty. They're not planning a new highway around here, are they? For who, the raccoons? Thanks. What about a ski lodge? No. We don't have enough snow. If we did, we wouldn't have a water shortage. You know something? I'm about ready for the uh, pirate map and the buried treasure. Hmm. It could be anything. Yep. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. 
staring me right in the face, and I didn't even think of it. What is? Peyton's water supply. Well, does it still come from Harrison? Yeah, but in a couple of years, it's going to be so polluted, you're not going to be able to drink it. The only way they can get the water in here from High Lake is to bring it straight down through this property. Now I see it. It's a pattern. A pattern of what, Norman? Outside interest buying up this town. You mean the New Star Corporation taking over the mill? Not only the mill. They bought up the Peyton Towers, they're buying up shares in the bank. And Carson had an offer to sell his newspaper. And what was that new name I saw in the hospital last night? Nemo Medical Service? Okay, okay. Uh, there is a pattern. But there's only one motive when you try to take over a town's water supply. What's that? Power. And with that power, Norman, absolute control. Yeah. You know, you kind of remind me of Rodney Harrington. Big, good looking. I was just a teeny tiny when he lived here, but I had the biggest crush on him. I see you watching me in school, Andy. You do? I don't mind, though. I like it. Bonnie, would you, would you like to maybe do something with me sometime? What do you have in mind? Well, I don't know. A, a movie or, or maybe ice skating. I just... I've got to go, Bonnie. Andy! Uh, you again. Hey, Bonnie. Why do you always carry that camera with you? You steal it off a tourist or something? Billy Kaiserman, what are you doing? What does it look like? Billy! You know, you could be a terrific model. Oh, come off it. You really think so? Sure I do. You're prettier than those models I got in New York. Yes, I, f I do feel like a fool. I mean, how did you expect me to feel? I didn't want to hurt you, David. Well, you did. And now you're about to tell the whole world what happened. I'm the only one who saw the accident. I'm the only one who spoke to Rod who knew he wasn't drunk. Well, don't you think people might say you're a bit prejudiced? I'm sorry. I know you have no other choice. Will you move in here to the inn with me? Are you staying? Of course I'm staying. I don't know why, but I'm staying. Do you want me to move in? Yes. I feel as if you're going to bring along a squad full of ghosts with you. I still love you, and you're still my wife. Okay? Okay. Both shot at close range with a 32 caliber pistol. And the fire was so intense, I, I couldn't even see the wounds when I identified the bodies. What do you do about it, Howard? Well, I'll call the coroner's office, have them schedule an inquest. Meanwhile, I can have my own people start an investigation. Has anybody got any ideas to a motive? Rod and Allison might have been onto something. It has to do with the water supply, but. Look, I know it sounds wild. I've heard wilder. As district attorney, I've heard a lot wilder. Betty, I'm sorry you're leaving. We'll still have time to visit. How long do you think you'll be in town? I don't know. It, it might take quite a while. Uh, uh, do you think your friends have found something more about the accident? I better not say, Denise. How long do you figure until the inquest? Well, a few days. At least they're underway. I hope so.
You got a spot for the old heap? How long are you planning to stay? Well, it's hard to say. Uh, you here on business? Do I look like a businessman? Why the third degree, Bo? His money looks as good as anybody's. Thank you, ma'am. I'm mighty grateful. I haven't had a good shower for days. Park right over there. Thanks. Hey, I'll, I'll come with you and I'll show you where the showers are, okay? Thanks. Roy Springer, musician. No permanent address. So? You better get hold of yourself, mister. These days, even the breeze makes you nervous. Home sweet home. <laughs> there she goes, making up to him. That girl's got no respect for anybody. There's not much left to respect, is there? you in that high-priced heart. You took the house, you took the bank account, and you took the stocks. Is there something you forgot to take, Ruth? I just want to show you what your son is up to. <whistles> Billy took these. Well, you bought him off with that expensive camera, and that's what he does with it. Look, are you going to talk to him, or do I? I'll talk to him. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. Get those. My father's got the world's largest collection. Oh, no. He was unfriendly enough when I checked in. I mean, for a man who runs a trailer camp, he sure doesn't like strangers. He just got a headache today. Yeah, the whole town must have a headache. What is it, that accident that's got everybody so uptight? I guess so. They stayed here, the two died, huh? Uh-huh. Hey, this your guitar? Yeah. Oh, let me play it. Oh, uh, not right now. Oh, come on. Funny. I'm not going to hurt anything. Uh, Come on, what's the big deal? This better be our little secret. How long is it going to take before we stand up to this mysterious New Star Corporation? So that they can't threaten our homes and our jobs and our lives and our futures. Are you sure you want to go that far, Mr. Carson? Yes, I'm sure. Every word of it. How long is it going to take before the facts become self-evident? It's been nearly a week now since the deaths of Alison McKenzie and Rodney Harrington. How long is it going to take before we, we admit what's taking place here? How long is it going to take for the coroner to ask for an inquest? Or the police to begin an investigation. The clarion is going to continue to demand an inquest until that inquest takes place. The undersigned is going to continue to persist. Not only because the victims were a beloved daughter and a valued friend, but because he fears for the very fabric of our town. The police haven't been here to ask any questions, huh? No. Don't you feel that's kind of strange, seeing as how Rod and Allison are staying here? The police are too busy hassling the kids at the drive-in. That's about all their little brains can handle.
Guess I'll go check on the kids. Jill, honey, you two aren't helping me. Asking questions, keeping things stirred up, won't bring nobody back. We're in debt over our heads. We could lose this place in a minute. That'd be the end of me right now. The only thing I can do to keep from going under is... is to do what I'm told. Oh, Dad, what have you done? Hey, Kelly, Leslie, you want to try out the rocker? Okay. Nice looking kids you got there. Thanks, I like them. What have you been up to, Springer? Earning every penny you and Elliot Carson are paying me. I try to get up to that penthouse in Peyton Towers. Almost got my bones broken for my trouble. Did you find out who the real owners of the New Star Corporation are? No. I tooled over to the state capitol to check out the articles of incorporation, but all they listed were a bunch of dummy officers. That's a help. I think your brother was trying to find out the same thing. Why? Because I found his name in the visitor's register. His name and Allison McKenzie's. They checked out the same documents I did. Yeah, they must have suspected something with the water supply. When were they there? Two days before they died. School for stewardesses in Boston, and they had a big ad in the newspaper. And I figured if I lied about my age, it only takes about three months, and then when I graduated, I'd never have to come back here again. Bonnie, what are you talking about? These. Just look at these. It's us at the cannery. Where did you get these? Somebody left them in my school locker. Are you ready for that? My dad sees he's gonna skin me alive. I think your sister's gonna do to me. This is statutory rape. I don't really look like that, do I? Shh. Star Corporation. I'll be waiting outside. What are you 
want. You like the pictures? So it was you, Billy Kaiserman, you creep. I should have known. Nah, you be nice to me. Or I'll leave a set of prints in your sister's mailbox, or maybe Andy Considine's. Shut up. You know how to be nice, Bonnie. You know how to be real nice. What are you talking about? You're nice to Stan. You can be the same with me. You gotta be out of your mind. I got a lot of those pictures. And I can always print more. You guys ought to be real proud of yourself. You just have the best second story men in the country. See, that's great, pal. That makes our night. Hey, you guys wouldn't want to make a deal, huh? Look, I got a record. Uh, see, the judge this time will send me away till I'm gray. Gee, that's too bad, but you know something? I don't believe a word. Oh, not that hurts, man. I mean, I'm a crook. I'm not a liar. It's too bad. Let's go. Springer's dead. Take it as a tribute. Apparently he was on to you. It's time for Elliot Carson and the others to have their inquest. He said he was in a hurry to talk to me. Are you going to go to the police? No. I'm going to see what happened. Norman. What? Norman, at my folks tonight. Yeah, what about it? Never mind. Never mind who it is. If you don't want those pictures all over town, just do what you're told. Please take care of those papers. Hey, Stan. Was that an accident? No, it was uh, a problem. What happened? I tried to escape. I thought he had a gun and I had to shoot him. You're taking a big chance coming here tonight. I had to get these records out of personnel once and for all, yours and mine. Somebody must think we're in trouble. Yeah, nothing we can't handle. Crimpton? Crimpton! Dr. Jensen, what is he doing here? It's none of your business. You get off these hospital grounds immediately. Dear you. You get out or I will call the police. I wouldn't if I were you. What? You're not gonna call the police. You're not gonna do anything. Because if you do, people around here are gonna start asking questions. Questions like, what's that kid of yours doing walking around on the streets without an ether? What was the name of the last hospital you worked at? You know, the one that had the terrible fire. Why do you think you were hired? The new management knew all about you and your son. Yeah, what was his sentence for arson? Three years in a hospital for the criminally insane? You telling me that I have been set up 
Yeah. Uh, yeah, you're through giving orders to me, Mrs. Considine. Who's working in personnel this hour of the night? Uh, nobody. It's just some cleaning women. You all right? Um, yeah, it's just been one long day. I'd love to take you up on that drink you offered me. All right, right. let's get something to eat, too. I have one more in the hospital to solve what he's saying, so pressuring them in the paper. I just hope that it's legitimate. Look at them. They hate us. All we're asking is a little justice. They're just afraid, Connie. That's all. This new Star Corporation has got them terrified. They're just afraid for their jobs and their families. They still have their families. Excuse me, please. I didn't say anything to Norman about the other night. It's just as well now. I wish I had said something. I don't like keeping things from my husband. Mom, if you do know something, tell me. Hello, Norman. Hi. Hi, sweetheart. What are you doing here? I decided to come watch my husband in action. Well, this is just a coroner's inquest. There won't be any judge, no defense attorney. Just you? I'm not sure it's a good idea you're being here. And it's certainly not a good idea flaunting this new car. How do you hide a car, Howard? Do you have any idea the risks I've taken to keep you happy? I, I never asked you for this car. I never asked you for anything. friend you go in and I'll wait for you here Stan look you you did have to shoot I Sprit didn't you shoot answer. anybody I didn't kill anybody why did you say you did I had to why all I did was tell them where Betty was meeting Harrington why, why would you say you shot him Alan you didn't Denise I gotta tell you something I don't want to lose you I, I gotta tell you the truth Isn't it true that Mr. Harrington was drunk that night? Rod, Mr. Harrington was not drunk. Well, how could you tell that on the telephone? I, I just knew, that's all. It, it's not as if we were strangers. Mrs. Rorick, why did you go to meet your ex-husband that night? Actually, how did you happen to be in Peyton Place at the time? A business matter. Business? With Mr. Harrington? Yes. A business matter that couldn't be conducted by phone or by letter? Yes, that's right. One that required your coming all the way here from Chicago and meeting with your ex-husband at night in some secluded spot five miles out of town. Yes. You really expect us to believe all that? A clandestine meeting that never took place? Yes. I repeat, Mrs. Rorick, why did you take all this trouble to meet with your ex-husband? Because he asked me to. Will you tell the coroner's jury what that means, Dr. Jensen? It means they were drunk. 
Rodney Harrington's alcohol count was 2.5. Allison McKenzie's was 1.9. And can you tell us anything else, Doctor? No, not really. Oh, uh, except the bodies are almost unrecognizable. Mr. Kaiserman, I think Dr. Jensen there better get another pair of glasses. When I examined the bodies, I found two bullet wounds. And those were the wounds that killed them. It's an irresponsible statement, Dr. Rossi, and it can never be proven. It can be proven. How? The bodies were cremated days ago. The bodies were never cremated. The bodies of Rodney Harrington and Allison McKenzie are in the Peyton Place Hospital in the morgue. Dr. Rossi is uh, causing trouble. <laughs> Michael never was one to look the other way. Are you in love with Michael Rossi? Not now. Well, I guess that answers my question. Leave me alone. As madam wishes. Oh, Tristan. And take those dogs with you. Stella, these dogs are here for your protection. I don't need their protection. I am sick of them. I would like to see them put away. Come on, boys. Come on. Come on. Come on. Stella. Once you've trained a beast to perform a certain service, it's dangerous to confuse him. Why? You could have such a, a brilliant future if you weren't determined to wreck it. Is this wrecking it? This is a matter of pride, and you know it. And what's wrong with pride? Nothing, but it doesn't thrive on lies. Don't you see, this way it becomes a sick thing. It twists on itself, becomes a malignancy of the spirit. And it's what kills your father. My father drank himself to death. Stella, alcohol was a terminal symptom. But your father died of the same thing as your brother, Joey. The sick, twisted pride of a liar. Rodney Harrington killed my brother. Why are you doing this to yourself, Stella? Don't you see you're degrading your own intelligence, lying to what satisfy a dead man's delusions? He killed Joey, and he's going to pay for it. Stella, is it worth all this? Look at me. Beside what you're doing to Rodney Harrington, all right, put that aside. Is it worth what you're doing to Stella Churning? You are way off base, Doctor. Am I? Stella, take this to the district attorney. Take it to Fowler now. Tell him you've been lying. Admit it now while the jury's still out. It's still not too late. <laughs> well, so that's your pitch. I was waiting. I knew you didn't keep me here just out of professional necessity. Stella. Or need for my companionship. You are a born do-gooder, Dr. Rossi. Riding to Rodney's rescue. And yours. Yes, we mustn't forget my soul. Well, I'm afraid it's too late for either of us. Tomorrow it'll all be over. And when those 12 good citizens turn in that verdict, it will be a key to two prisons. The one they lock Rodney away in, and the one they turn me out of. I'll be free of Peyton Place, once and for all. <laughs> Thank you. 
once and for all. just a matter of turning your heads the other way because Dr. Rossi here has told you that there were bullet holes and you can prove it but we're we're giving up control of our town here first it was the mill and then the hospital and, and now right here in this room we're beginning to forget the difference between right and wrong beginning to feel that it's, it's it's easier to sort of go along with things easier to say yes to evil well it isn't easier my dear friends it's 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 dangerous and deadly and corrosive do you really think that this is going to stop with the deaths of my daughter and Rodney Harrington? Whoever it is who has you so terrified isn't going to stop with Rodney and Allison. One day they may decide that it's your daughter or your brother may stand in the way. And when that day comes, murder in Peyton Place will be an ordinary occurrence. This town used to stand for something. Though. There was a morality here, a sense of decency. An ethic that was handed down from generation to generation that if a man was alone and it's in trouble... It's time for you to make a choice. ...he'd on his neighbors looking out for him, helping them, not stabbing them in the back. Well, what's happened to that sense of decency? Have money and survival become the only things that matter? Does each one of us threaten the other? Has Peyton Place become a, a, a jungle? Norman! Who's behind it, May? Penthouse at Payton Towers. That's all I know. She's our daughter, Bo. I had to tell her. I'm glad you did. I've let them push us around too long. Mr. Cord, I've got to talk to you. It's about the murders. I was there. What a fool. Helping the man you love. Do something with her. Come on, boys. Come on. And then finally, of course, we heard the very moving fiction spun by Mr. Carson. I'm sure it touched all of your emotions, touched your fears. But ladies and gentlemen, we're here to deal with facts. Mr. Kaiserman, that fiction already seems to be coming true. And I think I have the facts. Members of the jury, I'm going to prove conclusively that the deaths of Rodney Harrington and Alison McKenzie were not an accident, but murder. Murder of the most cold-blooded and premeditated kind. And I'm going to demand, Mr. Kaiserman, that a warrant be sworn out for the arrest of Stella Chernak and her accomplices. That's right, ladies and gentlemen. Stella Chernak. What have you done with her? Won't you come in, gentlemen? 
Listen, don't you think it's time for whoever it is you're working for to come out in the open? Do you really think so, Michael? Stella? Yes, Stella. Well, the new Star Corporation? Of course. New Stella, new Star. You used to tell me how smart I was, Michael. You used to tell me to do something with my brains. Well, look what I've done. And after all these years, you're still looking for revenge for your brother's death, huh? For his murder by your brother. Where's my wife? She's in the bedroom, but I wouldn't try to get past the dog. Where's the bedroom? Jill, you all right? I'm all, I'm all right. Don't, don't try and come in here. Don't worry, Norman. It wouldn't amuse me to hurt her. Did it amuse you to have one of your thugs kill my brother and Allison? They found out it was you, didn't they, Stella? You were the one who was buying up Indian Hollow. And they figured out why. Because you want to control the Peyton Place water supply. You've become quite a deep thinker, haven't you, Norman? They told you they were going to stop you, didn't they? Nobody can do that. Nobody can stand in my way anymore. Rodney killed my brother. This town killed my father. Working in that mill, it killed my mother grieving for him. But that's all changed now. People listen to me. And who was it you told that killed the detective? One of your uh, little friends here? Oh, now why would I do a thing like that? Yes, why, Norman? You seem to have all the answers. Because he found out it was you, that you're the new Star Corporation. And if I am, what does that say? You have no evidence, you have no witnesses. Even if you took what you know or you suspect down to that hearing, you'd only be making fools of yourselves. I don't think so, Stella. Wait, you don't seem to understand, Michael. I am not just Stella anymore. I am an empire. Ben. Stella Chernak, Jay Caymans, and a few of the others. She's up in the penthouse. Carla, you and Betty wait in the lobby, will you? You know, I think we've finished this conversation. Your questions don't amuse me anymore. It's all supposition. Besides, I own this town. By the time this day is over, and that coroner's jury has returned a verdict of accidental death, you and... Elliot Carson and the few others I don't own. Might as well pack your bags and leave. Yes, I understand. What is it, Tristan? The police are on the way over here with a warrant for your arrest, Stella, for murder. We're leaving. Tell Crimpton to get the helicopter ready. Oh, 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 ah. you and David could make it back for this. This is the way Allison and Rodney would have wanted it, together. 
Yes. In peace. Amen. <laughs>